This is a video about the GCSE Biology topic of decay. This comes up in Unit 7 of AQA GCSE Biology, the ecology topic, and it only appears in the specification for triple scientists. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the conditions required for decomposition, describe how decay can lead to the production of biogas, and also describe how to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of digestion of milk. This is the required practical for this topic. Microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria play a vital role in agriculture by causing decomposition or decay. We call these microorganisms decomposers. As these decomposers break down organic matter, they respire, and in doing so they release carbon to the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. They also digest other food molecules, such as proteins, so they release mineral ions like nitrates into the soil. Decomposition, such as in compost heaps, occurs fastest when it's warm, with sources of water and oxygen. If there's insufficient oxygen available, then biogas may be produced. This is a mixture of gases that can be used as a fuel, but methane is a major component of biogas, often making up around 60%. Since methane is a greenhouse gas, biogas shouldn't be released into the atmosphere. Many remote communities have biogas generators, which they feed with domestic waste to allow them to create enough biogas to use as a fuel. A simple exam question might ask you to list three or four reasons why fruit picked from the same plant on the same day would decompose at different rates. Pause the video and check that you can write down the four reasons now. The fruit might decay faster if it was subject to warmer conditions, moister conditions, if it had more oxygen available, or if it had been exposed to more microorganisms. Alternatively, you might be given some data to analysis, like this graph, which shows you how the rate of decay changes with changing temperature and changing oxygen availability. This would be a two mark question. Pause the video and see if you can write down the two marking points. The first thing we need to say in this question is that as the temperature increases, the rate of decay increases. The second thing I would want to do is to support this using some data. So for instance, I could pick an oxygen availability like 5% and then say that at 15 degrees, the relative rate of decay is 10 times, but at 25 degrees, it's 20 times. Questions about decomposition or decay are often put in the context of a compost heap and how a gardener or a farmer would want their compost heap to be warm and to be moist and also to be aerated, so it's really important to have air holes or to be constantly mixing it. Now, sometimes those questions will be qualitative, so you would just have a moister compost heap and a drier compost heap, but sometimes they're going to involve numerical data. And one really good way to get this is using a data logger. So you could have a data logger that's attached to a temperature sensor and also attached to a carbon dioxide sensor. Both of those sensors are going to give you a result because the microorganisms are going to be respiring and in doing so they release carbon dioxide and also they increase the temperature as they release that energy. The advantage of using a data logger rather than just standing there with a thermometer in your hand is that you're going to get more precise measurements but also you can be continuously monitoring and you can monitor even if you're not there in person. As part of GCSE biology you should have carried out the milk decay practical which is supposed to represent decomposition although really it's just another optimum conditions for enzymes working practical. The aim of the practical is to investigate the impact of temperature on this process. You start with tubes of milk lipase enzyme, which will break down the lipids in the milk, and sodium carbonate buffer, which provides the alkaline conditions needed by the lipase enzyme. You may have also added bile salts to emulsify the fat in the milk, breaking the lipids into smaller droplets so that the enzyme is able to work faster. These tubes are put into water baths. This allows you to precisely control the temperature, so you would need a different water bath for each temperature, or you could do one set of experiments and then repeat having adjusted the temperature. You need to use the thermometer to check what the temperature inside the tube is, because it might take a little while for each tube to come up to temperature. You could put the tubes into the water bath and allow them to each come up together, or it's possible to mix together the milk and sodium carbonate and bile salts if you're using it, and allow that to warm up and then finally you add the lipase. It's really important that you don't add the lipase until you're ready to start the experiment and start timing. 
As the lipase breaks down the lipids in the milk, this makes fatty acids and glycerol. The fatty acids are acids, so they lower the pH, and the pH can be monitored using a pH probe. And this process can be timed. The experiment can then be repeated with tubes at different temperatures. The faster the pH falls, the closer to the optimum temperature the enzyme is. If a pH probe is unavailable, then you can still achieve valid data by using a pH indicator which changes colour. For instance, phenolphthalein is bright pink in significantly alkaline conditions, but it turns colourless in solutions with a pH lower than 8. Using an indicator is cheaper, but it also provides you with data that is more subjective than using an instrument, because it's down to human judgement whether or not the solution is still pink. In this experiment, your independent variable is the temperature that the tubes are at. It's really important that you're actively controlling that temperature by using a water bath. Your dependent variable would be the length of time that it takes for the tube to reach a particular pH, or for the colour of the indicator to change. Your control variables will be the volume of the milk, the lipase, the sodium carbonate, and if you're using them, then the bile salts, and also the concentration of the enzyme. These need to be the same in every single experiment so that you have valid data and you know the only thing affecting the time is the temperature change. It's also important that you're referring to the volume of the milk and the lipase and so on, not just amount, as this is often not worth credit. In the exam, you may be given some data from this practical and asked to analyse this. Pause the video and have a go at answering these three questions about this data table now. In the first question, you're asked to describe the trend in results and they specify from 20 degrees to 40 degrees, so it's important you're looking at the relevant rows of the table. Here I can see that as the temperature increases from 20 to 40, the time taken goes from 16 to 7 to 4. So firstly I would say, as the temperature increases, the time taken decreases. If this was a two mark question, I'd then want to support that with data from the table by stating at 20 degrees it takes 16 minutes, but at 40 degrees the reaction is four times faster. No digestion occurs at 60 degrees C because this temperature is too hot and so the enzyme has become denatured. That means its active site has permanently changed shape and therefore it won't be able to interact with the substrate anymore, so no digestion can occur. A student says that the optimum temperature is 40 degrees, but I don't actually know that for certain. I know that 40 degrees is a more appropriate temperature than 30 and more appropriate than 50, but I don't actually know whether the optimum could be 42 or 38. So what I need to do is repeat the experiment using more temperatures and they obviously need to be temperatures between 30 and 50. I'm not going to suddenly find that 52 would be a more appropriate temperature. So I should repeat using further temperatures between those two boundaries. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found that a useful introduction to decomposition and the decay required practical. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE biology videos coming soon.